Hello. <coughs> Fucking hell. Hello and welcome to another episode of Arm Review. What a great intro already. Um, yeah, we have the third studio album by the indie rock legend, The Smiths. Um, yeah, and I actually reviewed this record already, like uh, early in the day. I believe it was one of the earliest requests that I got, you know. Yeah, so pretty early on. You know, Stephen Young requested this one a while, while back at the beginning because he thought he was just gonna request some like critical acclaimed records and I was gonna check them out, so there we go. Um, but Rock Do requested this album recently again, in I believe, you know, a couple of weeks ago, so there we go. Um, yeah, and I gave it actually a relatively low rating at its inception. I gave it like an 8 or something because I was, no, I just thought it was alright. But listen, listening to the record again, I can definitely think that my rating was very off. You know, because I just wasn't very into the Smiths and I just really do, didn't understand a lot of the musical messages that were made in this album. Uh, the, the record has 10 tracks, it's relatively short, 36 minutes and 48 seconds, so it's a relatively short album. Uh, the first track is the title track, The Queen Is Dead. Uh, just kind of a li like light-hearted tone this one is, uh, just a very like upbeat kind of funny song. The drums are very rhythmic on this track, a lot of great instrumentation. The vocals by Morris here are really iconic on this track. Six minutes long, so it might be one of my personal favorite uh, Smith songs, but I still have to make it, you know, like a top 10 list or something. Probably, I'm, I'm gonna make that in, you know, at some point, but I don't, don't know when. Still have to kind of listen to the other Smith albums. Uh, then we have Frankly, Mr. Shankly, and I've actually heard this song before. Uh, you know, how did it go again? Um, you know, you know, it has a very like light-hearted, fun kind of riff to it. Very energetic, very or not per se energetic, but very. I mean, it is a Smith, so well, come on now, the Prussian band. Uh, but a very light-hearted, funny, harmless riff, very enjoyable. It's a short track of the album, but it's like one of those uh, kind of light-hearted, uh, small kind of, you know, fun songs to listen to. So, there's, you know, you don't have, this track doesn't have to be that long because the message is very clear. Great riff, I love it. Uh, speaking of tracks that I love, uh, I know it's over, I mean, this track, man, um, I probably overlooked it, you know, whenever I did review this one. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I know it's over. The bass lines on this album are great. This this uh, record right here. Uh, the lyrics are very great. You know, the lyrics, I actually did remember them at, uh, you know, at the first time because they're so iconic. You know, if you are so clever, if you are so handsome, then why are you on your own? You know, uh, more she's basically saying that people that uh, you know, think, oh, they're so clever and they're so, you know, uh, enthusiastic and they're so, you know, above everyone else, then why are you still alone? I just love the lyrical content of the song. I love the, the bass lines. I love the soulful singing of, uh, of Morrissey. Just an amazing track. I love this track, man. It's one of my all-time favorites. Uh, Never Had No One Ever. Uh, this is uh, one of the tracks that I do need to listen to a bit more because uh, it's definitely a unique track, it's very light-hearted, it's a very fun song to listen to, three and a half minutes long, so it's destined for the radio. Uh, great song, I just didn't really, you know, um, didn't really catch my ear the first time around, but maybe if I listen to it again, then I would love it, you know. You know, this record only grows me, because the first time I didn't really care for it, I liked it, but never loved it. The second, I mean, now I absolutely adore it, so you, you pretty much know the rating already. And maybe the third time, it's, you know, well, it's it's already one of my all time favorites, so it should indicate the rating already, but uh, spoiler alert, but, uh, but you know, it just gets better with every lesson, that's what I'm trying to say. Now we have Cemetery, Gra Cemetery Gates, and I actually thought that the song was a, a lot darker than I actually thought it would be, because, you know, Cemetery Gates, pretty dark song. Actually, Phil and Selma of Pantera talked about the song too, that they have a Cemetery Gate song. And although I do prefer that version because, you know, it's like seven minutes long, it has an acoustic, it has a solo. Although this song has an acoustic uh, riff too. Uh, it's a very light-hearted tune, it's kind of like Frankly Mr. Shankly again. 
Uh, the lyrical content is very gloomy, the song is very upbeat and happy. Uh, it, it's kind of like a two-faced song because Morrissey is, or the music is very happy, but the lyrics are kind of dark and kind of like, you know, let's go to the cemetery gates, let's uh, look at our uh, diseased uh, family, you know, our diseased loved ones or something. It's a very dark track, you know, but it's it's, it's kind of like one of those songs, those happy sounding songs that are actually depressing. Cemetery gates is basically that, so. I actually love the two-faced kind of way that the song has, so that you know makes it great. I think. Then we have Big Mouth tracks again. The sixth one, very classic song. You have, of course, the opening riff. Just a very iconic riff right there. I love when whenever Morse says Big Mouth strikes again. You know, I love that too. Or, you know, the way I said it, that's how he says it live, which I actually prefer. But it's, it's still great on the record. Great riffs, very consistent song, very memorable. One of the Smiths' best and just a great song. And speaking of great songs, this is one of my all time favorites. The Boy with the, with the Thorn in the Side. Uh, I love the opening riff. The boy with a thorn in his side Beyond the hatred lies Or something like that I actually came pretty far with that, but there we go I really love the lyric, you know, that goes like Behind the hatred lies uh, a murderous design Just such a great lyric right there I love the lyrical content you know, I love the moans whenever <laughs> Morsi goes into the moaning sound, I love that too. It's uh, just very iconic, the riff is amazing, just very dreamy, very catchy. Um, I just love the song, man, I love it. It's one of my all-time favorites, the boy with the, with the thorn in the side. It's also, it's probably also one of my favorite uh, song titles, just, yeah, it's pro probably one of my favorite yeah, uh, title, fucking hell, just what I, what I just said, you know what I mean. Uh, then we have Viker in a tutu, and this is very, uh, this is pretty much one of the funniest songs on the records. Uh, yeah, Morsi's just kind of saying that uh, this guy is dressed up in a tutu because he m lost the bet or something. It's definitely an, uh, not, not an album. it's a great track though, but it's, uh, it's definitely a um, kind of a hidden track since it's uh, between the four big hit singles of the record. Uh, so this track is definitely a great one. It's it's kind of frankly Mr. Shankly, with the lyrical content of the Queen is dead. So it's pretty much you know uh, the best of both worlds, I suppose. Great track. It's just kind of hidden on this record since it's between all these hit singles. There we go. And then we have pretty much the best, arguably the best Smith song of all time. It's the highest rated Smith song. So there we go. Uh, you know, on best ever albums and. Uh, all mute, well, just critics in general. Yeah, best of for arms, I guess. There we go. Um, yeah, there's a light that never goes out. Um, I just love the lyrical content of this uh, record. I just love, um, y you know, uh, Morrissey's talking about whenever we get hit by a double decker, I hope that at least we are together or something. It's just a very romantic track. The bass is great on this record. The tone is just amazing. Um, yeah, just the, o the overall composition of this record, four minutes long, it's just a consistent track. The lyrical content is amazing, the instrumentation is amazing, the production is amazing, so this is just a flawless track. This whole album really, so, um, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much, it's, it is probably my favorite Smith song, really. It's up there though, it's up there, so there we go. Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others is the closing track, this is a very funny track, uh, a lot of light-hearted tunes on this record. Um, lyrical content is really funny, you know, Morsi comparing the mother's girls to the girls to the mothers and stuff like that. That uh, or s some, some girls' mothers are bigger than other uh, girls' mothers, you know, stuff like that. It's a very funny track, you know, the, the Smiths don't take themselves all too seriously all of the time, which I appreciate, you know. Some bands really take themselves seriously with records like this, but the, the Smiths do have kind of a joking side to them, which I do appreciate. Uh, so overall, this was an amazing record, of course, it's a classic. Uh, the Queen is Dead is great, the album, but I mean, the the song, the opening track. Uh, frankly, Mr. Shanky is catchy, I know it's over, it's one of my all time favorites, Never Had No One Ever is great, Cemetery Greats is, uh, is two-faced, it's very, uh, it's very misleading, but it's just amazing. 
Big Mouth Strikes, Strikes Again is amazing, The Boy with the Torn in the is amazing, Viker and the Tutu is underrated, There's a Light That Never Goes Out is pretty much the best Smith song, and Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others is a great clothing track. So this is pretty much a flawless album. Uh, it's a classic, I mean it's a 10 out of 10, I mean come on. Um, so I don't know why I did gave it like an 8 on this inception, but it's it's a classic, I mean come on. It's, um, it's an indie rock classic, it's uh, one of the best records in, in that genre, I guess, in, in the alt rock scene. Uh, yeah, so let me know what you think about this record by The Smiths, The Queen Is Dead. Um, I mean, everybody will have a song, come on now. Uh, yeah, so let me know what you think about it in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And yeah, let me know, of course, what is your favorite Smith song, what is your favorite Smith album, what do you think of Morrissey, uh, you know, let's throw that in there, what's, what's your favorite Morrissey song. I haven't really listened to Morrissey yet, his solo career, but uh, but I'm definitely, you know, if it is requested, I will happily accept it, so there we go. Uh, yeah, let me know all those things in the comments down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, and listen to The Queen Is Dead, it is one gem of a record, but... I mean, it's relatively popular, so you probably already know that. But still, if you haven't listened to it in a while, put it on again and enjoy its greatness.